Welcome to the NACE Gallery at the Paint Spot. We are a retail store run by artists. Our gallery features local artists to inspire other artists. We value that art is not always pretty or commercial in nature. And our space has room for the unexpected. Tim McCullough's show, AB Ledge Gift Shop, fills our space from floor to ceiling. Hi, Tim. What was your impression when you first saw the show hung? Um, it was awesome. I, my studio is very, very cramped. Um, and it's also just literally a studio apartment. Uh, and the lighting in there is like, kind of like a brownish red as well. So when I see all of my pieces next to each other uh, with proper lighting on them, uh, it's really amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Tim Bakula. Uh, I'm a artist uh, based out of Edmonton. I have been here my whole life. My, the first sort of, like I would say, like art form that I'm, uh, that I did was um, performing. So a lot of uh, theater and improv and improv comedy and that kind of stuff. Um, and that kind of has informed my artistic practice. Um, I started painting because number one, with performing you need an audience for it, so you just can't do it at home at midnight. Um, and if you can, it's a bit weird. And uh, writing, I love doing that, and it is, uh, to be like totally honest, people don't read as much as they used to, like when they, there's like several paragraphs. So uh, there was a point, I go through phases where I just get like super moody and angsty um, every couple years. and. There was a time when I just, I was like, I'm done with performing, I'm done with writing, forget all that. I just want to paint because uh, people can't not look at paintings. So they, even if they don't want to uh, sort of digest your vision, they, uh, they have to at least a little bit. So that's where I started with painting. I also always have been like, I've always like doodled and painted on the side super casually. Um, and I started painting a bit more seriously with uh, something called the Endless Portrait Project where I would get folks to send me a, and I, I'm still doing it, uh, people will send me a picture of their face and then I will make a portrait of them um, with the goal of doing 100,000 by the year 2050. And I'm behind schedule, but I'm like coming in at like maybe 8,000, so I'm like 8% of the way there. Um, and that is, that's sort of when I started painting and kind of seeing myself in my own mind's eyes. So regarding your show that's up right now, um, your paintings are very timely and sometimes almost as soon as the headline hits, you seem to have new work. Do you search out topics or is it naturally optimized through social media? Yeah, definitely through social media. I'm a bit of a, like an addict in that sense, um, but uh, yeah, I mean it helps. I don't have a smartphone so that I, I can't truly just like mainline that stuff. While I taking a shit or whatever, but, um, yeah, a lot of it is just like, I'll just go on Twitter and whatever, like, leftist dirtbags I follow will be talking about a thing, and sometimes that will be the inspiration, um, sometimes I just, like, will paint something, and then on Monday I try to do a piece every week, uh, and on just, like, the Monday I will just find something that either, like, outrages me or a funny space for a joke, and I'll just sort of put that on top of whatever I'd previously painted, um, so yeah, it's a bit of, I would say it's a bit of like whatever seems to be like the hot button issue, whatever like I'm sort of personally compelled by or think is worth noting um, in the sort of like political landscape at that time. And then sort of the third one of like, what do I think would make the best painting or what best reflects the painting that I've already made. Okay. Um, when you're creating the work for the show, does writing come first before the painting or vice versa? or thinking about what you're going to write while you're creating the piece? Um, there's no hard answer for that uh, sometimes. And I also, like I find the best pieces I have is when I do have an idea and I know what I'm painting when I'm going into it. Uh, but that doesn't always happen. So sometimes I will just start painting and then um, yeah, sort of as I'm painting, I'll be thinking about things and I'll get there. And then sometimes I just finish the painting and then figure out what to write about it afterwards. So I would say it's like, it kind of depends on the week, which one I'm doing. Yeah, I think par I, partly it is just because I love, I love writing. Um, and 
it's fun when you get to attach like a physical object to the writing. Uh, so that is one of the things that I think it gives it like a bit more life. Um, and then another reason is, to be totally honest, like I don't, I don't have any formal training as an artist, and I think with certain aspects that are like really shows. Um, and I'm, I'm a pretty good writer and a pretty good painter. So like when you combine those, it like becomes something a bit more, a bit more unique, and I enjoy that. And they both like I can have a, a straightforward write up and then like an off the wall painting or an off the wall or a straightforward painting and an off the wall write up or both, and I get to play with those different things. So. It's almost like they, they hold each other up in a way where I get to be a bit silly or, or experimental with either of them um, when I mash them together. Do you listen to any kind of music while you're painting? If so, does music influence or support the way you paint? Um, yeah, definitely. I guess uh, going back to my, uh, you know, sort of burgeoning social media addiction. I also, at my studio, don't have the internet. Um, so I rely on what I have with my record player for listening to music, um, or CJSR, which is just, you know, the best. Uh, but for music, yeah, like I have a ton of Ween albums and Neil Young, and I do sort of, I, I gather, I actually think I am inspired by both of those in a way where uh, Ween, if you don't know them, are like, I would say, just a phenomenal band, uh, but their work is also uh, often like irreverent or funny or just like really weird so it just like which sort of creates a situation where you have to kind of truly confront the music because you don't have to face the music because uh, you don't know what they're doing or like what they're getting at um, and then I really like Neil Young just because he's like released an album every year like since like the mid 60s with the ex like a couple exceptions so just like the rate at which he produces work, I find a big inspiration. Um, once again, because I try to do a piece uh, every week, and sometimes that, like, artwork sucks. But you know, some of Neil Young's albums suck, so <laughs> that's that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, have you received a lot of support or backlash related to the political nature of the show? Um, I've received a lot of support and almost no backlash. Um, part of the project, especially at the beginning, is I would sell all of my work on Kijiji, because I think it's a very funny way to reach audiences, because, you know, someone's looking for snow tires and then they see a nude painting of Jason Kenney for sale. Um, so I, I guess going into that, I, would, I expected that I would see a lot of uh, blowback, but I think maybe like four, probably four or five times people have like been mad at me with messages um, and then the rest of the time it's been a lot of support uh, but I do with the Kijiji thing I think a lot of that is just the medium where it's just like it's pretty hard to just like get upset at somebody for selling something on Kijiji like it's a, just a different sort of mode of communication we have so um, yeah the answer is no I haven't it hasn't been outrageous as maybe I, I hoped or I hope um, does this feedback feel or cause you pause, like, positive, negative? I would say, the. I mean, the positive feedback, it's like, it's nice when someone says, oh, this made me laugh, like, and it's like, it's nice to laugh, and I think, yeah, I, I really love that feedback, especially because, like, there is, there is a, especially in my writing, I think there's, like, a hopelessness and a despair, but I, I think, in my mind, and, like, because I also feel the joy of painting it, like, I feel like it's, like, couched in, in levity, so, especially, yeah, when I get the feedback that says it, it gave folks a laugh, I find that very important. Do you think that you will continue creating political-based work, like the ones you've done for the show? Yeah, um, I plan to keep this going, um, maybe until there's a hundred thousand of them, um, but that <laughs> would take forever, but I do plan to, I, I want to keep going forever, and I think this is just a very sort of a personal thing, is I do want to continue it, um, after the next election, uh, whether or not the UCP win. I can't imagine that they will, but, but also part of me thinks they can um, because it's Alberta. So I want to continue at least for like a couple more years. I, I would like the project to continue through two different provincial governments. So maybe that will be my goal for however long, however long that takes. It might be another 75 years, but you may never know. Um, great, so yeah, should we do a, do yeah. a little reading or two? Wonderful, cool. 
Um, yeah, so I will be uh, doing two selected readings for the uh, Blake gift shop. Um, the first one, this is, um, I guess another thing about this is it's so interesting because the, the news moves so fast and a lot of my stuff is like very often specifically about something that happened that day or that week. So it, it like in a very weird way, or maybe it's not weird, it just doesn't age well at all. Uh, but what are you gonna do? So this reading is, this piece is called Tyler Shandro's Back Tattoo from May 11th, 2020. So this would have been, this is the description attached to the painting. It's also, if you stumbled across this uh, cruising Kijiji, you would have found this in the, in the product description. All right. So the following is a work of fiction, which makes it all the more unbelievable. I've spent much of the pandemic honing my skills as an underground tattoo artist. I've had dreams of opening a boutique studio in my mom's basement so I can expense Canadian taxpayers that would specialize in the kind of tattoos mainstream artists aren't edgy enough to do. This includes such pieces as No Ragrats Written in Kanji, Truly Disrespectful Portraits of Deceased Loved Ones, and That Little Lacoste Alligator on the Left Pectoral, so even in the nude like a wee babe, people will know you're a douche babe. Imagine my surprise when Tyler Shandro blustered into my studio Shan Shan, I protested. In reality, nobody calls him Shan Shan, only his friends call him that. This is exactly the kind of close quarters workplace that shouldn't be allowed to operate in these times. Tyler Shandra winked at me in rebut and we chuckled ironically for a minute, then stood in heavy silence for 10. Anyhow, Shandra was interested in getting a full back tattoo to commemorate all the hard work he's done. He clutched my shoulders and dictated his vision directly into my mouth. I see an expanse of unpredictable coloration fractured like the top of a creme brulee tapped with a lacquered pinky nail. Rural outskirts are poorly drawn and confused, beholden to the chaotic whims of ineptitude, and doctors' faces, grimacing with vicarious humiliation, must be pushed through so I can spiral myself backwards like a snake eating its own poo and shout at them. And most of all, I want bleakness to hang heavily over the piece like asbestos, like hot mayonnaise on a wedding cake, like a prairie mist in blue pre-morning. Desolate, empty, sad, like me. Tyler Shandro sits down in my egg chair. Doctors hate me, Ableg gift shop. I found out one weird trick and now doctors hate me. What was the weird trick, Shan Shan? I terminated the province's contract with doctors before it was set to expire. Then I stripped 141 rural communities of their rural status, but I walked back on that by blaming my shitty, incompetent staff. Oh, also, I implemented the physician funding framework, which doesn't take into account the wide range of work done by rural doctors and amounts to cuts of such severity doctors are fleeing the province. I even tried to replace them with a foreign app that collects medical information for third parties that will tell you you have lupus no matter what symptoms because it was designed by the writing staff of NBC's smash hit House MD. Wait, hold on, I also personally screamed at a doctor from his driveway because of a very mean meme I saw. I brought my wife too so she could watch my big swinging dick totally pwn that egghead. He probably definitely hates me. And then after that I, hold on. That sounds like more than one weird trick, Tyler. But I am a simple basement dwelling tattoo artist. I cannot help you. I hear the Alberta health minister is in town. Perhaps he can help you with your problems. But I bled gift shop, Tyler Shandro cries. I am the Alberta health minister. Ha <laughs> ha, oh fuck, nasty, sick, ew. Anyway, he didn't stay for that tattoo, but I still have the mock-up. It's a neat slice of provincial history. If your back happens to be four foot by five foot, you might be able to get the tattoo yourself. Otherwise, in six months, when your wise beyond their years children ask why there aren't any doctors left in Alberta, you can simply gesture towards this deeply affecting work of acrylic and oil pastel on canvas and howl with sadness. I'm hoping to get $1 billion for this piece because despite using oil pastels, I'm yet to receive my industry bailout. And scene. Thank you. <laughs>
So there's sort of three styles of write-ups that I do, where there's there's ones that are a fictional narrative, which is you know a fun tale. You get to go on a on a journey with a, a, a minister or a premier. Uh, then there's ones that are sort of more almost like Onion or Beaverton style political commentary. And then there's a third one, which is um, unhinged, usually like all caps locked, uh, sort of free verse poetry. Um, and that's the next one I would like to do. So this was written on June 8th, 2020. Um, it is, uh, I think it's very suiting for today, January 21st. Uh, on the, uh, the cancellation of the Keystone XL Pipeline. Uh, this work, uh, you see it right here, it is called Mr. Alberta Pipeline Incarnate Final Form. Um, just some uh, abstract Alberta poetry for y'all. <clears throat> Mr. Alberta. <clears throat> Mr. Alberta assumes final form. Blessed beast, rotund testicles teetering atop hollow spider legs, omnipresent roadside distraction. Natural aspect of fading industry slouches along asphalt shoulder, decrepit limbs wheezing rust red plumes. Wild rose straight jackets turn highway ditches to withered buffets. Winking grimace carving firefly flight patterns for children now agog. Once bleary and bored in backseat transit, Mr. Alberta shocks his humanity and lives and dies by the pipe. The pipe is mother's milk. Mr. Alberta buoyed by Bill 1 unconstitutional long arms with darned barbed wire mittens. Mr. Alberta police state monologue. Mr. Alberta takes a knee to hobble you. Mr. Alberta profit for few. Mr. Alberta glorious servitude okay, opaque hands in psychic daycare. Mr. Alberta iron lung of investment exhausted business capitalist aberration government intervention endless rehabilitation. Mr. Alberta's blank stare. The constellation of doomed future and sloughed profits, worthless crude Rorschach splatters, roadmap to masochistic ruin, hard and delirious. Mr. Alberta, cursed beast. Mr. Alberta, vampire's charm. Mr. Alberta, who visits you at night. Mr. Alberta, who soaks in your pool while you're on vacation. Mr. Alberta, brazen, brazen defecation on the corner of your eye. Mr. Alberta gives you pink eye. Mr. Alberta, French kisses the public spigot. Mr. Alberta, ruffles children's hair and gifts roiling clumps of lice. Mr. Alberta, suck the blood from brains. Mr. Alberta, tips 10%. Mr. Alberta, picks the oats from horses' feces and upsells them at farmers' markets. Mr. Alberta is incontestable. Mr. Alberta is critical infrastructure, naked skeleton, bleached mesquite, sun and smoke. Mr. Alberta, low-lying mist, perv, rose, strip tease, public land, coal for Christmas. Mr. Alberta demands to be present at your high school graduation. Mr. Alberta, the it's dark reflection, the lifeless sulfur bog water simulation of a shattered mirror reassembled by pilfered gum. Mr. Alberta, parody of a parody godless conservatism. Mr. Alberta, virile mismanagement, unabated intrinsic sickness, Trump's global fads. Mr. Alberta, spiteful. Mr. Alberta, vengeful. Mr. Alberta, prideful. Mr. Alberta, rainbow flag that dissipates in beige sandstorm year-long man-made drought. Mr. Alberta performer, Mr. Alberta dancer, Mr. Alberta groaning six-leg fandango at his own endless funeral, Mr. Alberta sentient nutsack brain dead and impotent, Mr. Alberta undulates in floodwaters like waterlogged dinner rolls, Mr. Alberta thankless damsel, Mr. Alberta slings medical supplies from drive through windows, Mr. Alberta home care health rep- Ellen Rural Clinics emptied like upended pockets shaken for worthless change, frightened and confused. Mr. Alberta, Mr. Alberta of mental austerity, Mr. Alberta rare meat, Mr. Alberta imposed end endangerment, Mr. Alberta last of its kind, Mr. Alberta obsolescent, Mr. Alberta toxic relic, Mr. Alberta lead paint, Mr. Alberta asbestos, Mr. Alberta, Mr. Alberta, Mr. Alberta. Yeah, I hope you want to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, so all I can say is I feel better than you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, great, so. That's it? Good. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Very fun. That was a lot of fun.
Tim, thanks so much for sharing your work with us. Um, your show, Alberta, or AB Ledge Gift Shop, runs at the paint spot until February 16th. We hope that you'll come by and see them for yourself and read more of the artist statements to the general public that are hopefully going to come in. Um, you can follow Tim on Instagram and you can buy prints from his website as well. So, thanks again. It's a good interview. Yeah, thank you so much.